All right, so this is kind of my second video in a two-part series, but really they're two different topics. One, the first video I just made, which I'm going to try to post them around the same time, was creating uh, volumes with ZFS file system. And then in this video, we're going to take that ZFS um, volume, and we're going to use SMB to share it out to, well, in this case, Windows hosts. So let's go ahead and log into my Linux instance here. Let's pull up a command prompt, because that's where we're going to do all this magic. Make that pretty sizable there. I'm gonna log in as root. And let's clear screen. Okay, so uh, on this particular VM, because this is a this is actually a virtual machine running Ubuntu, um, the VI does weird things for me, so I'm actually gonna install Vim because it handles my arrow keys a little better than VI does. Plus it color codes things, which is kind of nice. So let's get Vim installed really quick. And uh, so I think I went over this. So basically, we're going to take and install Samba. We're going to configure Samba for use for Windows. And we're going to add some users that you would use from Windows to access data. And um, basically, that's it. So this is pretty easy. So we're just going to say apt install Samba. We're going to get inst Samba installed on this host. It's going to install both an SMB daemon and the NMD, N NMBD daemon. Don't really know honestly what the NMB does. It's right there. I thought it would only be SMB daemon, but it is what it is. Okay, so what I want to do in so I'm going to copy kind of what I did at my home computer here, and basically what it is is I've got I've got one one share repository that everybody uses. We store our pictures and stuff like on it, like that, and then I have individual shares for everybody that wants to store their own collection of data on the server. So there's two different shares that we'll simulate here. One, we're going to create a share which is the common share. And then two, we're going to create a user share. And um, for all of those shares, what we've done here, because we don't, at my house, we don't care who accesses them. You can change this later in your own config, but we've got a group called share users and share users pretty much has access to every folder out there. And um, obviously you could, you could change that option when you create your own shares. If you want just yours locked to your user account and then a share folder for everybody else, but you'll get the idea once you see what we've done. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to do a group add um, and I want to say, I want to call it share users. That's what I've called my previous one. It's pretty easy to do that. And then I also want to add users. So I don't have, um, so I'm going to add users that are specifically only for accessing the Samba share. If you've already got users on, on your Linux server that you log into as, then that's fine. You can just use those. But if you've got users that you want to just use into the, the, the um, Samba share, but you don't really want them to sign into this, to the system, then you would use a command like this. So it's user add groups and we're going to put that group in the use the share users group that we just created um, we're going to set a password and then we're going to do a very simple password here called my pass and then we're going to say user group we're going to go with no create home Jeez, user group just creates a group with the same name as the uh, the user itself um, and then I want to set the shell. The setting the shell to user s bin no login basically means it can't log in. So then the username is going to be test in this case. So you can change this username to anything. Say you want to make it your name, your mom or something, you know, anything like that. But we're going to go with test because that's what the rest of the configuration is going to match. So I'm going to say add. So now I've got a user created. Now this isn't everything that I need to do. I also need to do, I need to set a password using using uh, Samba's password set tool, which is pretty easy to say Samba password like that, SMB pass WD. And we're gonna do the account of test. Actually, this the dash A means add, not account, but the account name is test, the user test. So I'm gonna add the user test into the SMB database. It's gonna ask for a password. I'm gonna literally make it the same as the one above. It says my pass right here. This is what I'm making the password. Push enter. And now I've got the now I've got Samba password for this particular user. Well, this is a really important part because if you didn't do this, you, your user wouldn't be able to access any of the Samba shares, even though the user's technically created in Linux. Um, the Samba share, excuse me, not Samba share. The Samba password configuration is kept here on this particular instance of um, Ubuntu, which I'm running 18.04. Yep. Okay. So. Um, so next, what we need to do is we need to modify the Samba share configuration, and this is sitting under Etsy Samba SMB.com. <clears throat> We're going to keep most of this the way it is. You can change your work group if you do a definition at home or wherever that you're doing this, and you have a work group that's you know other than just work group. Maybe it's a little you've got an actual DNS entry like mine. I do. It's it's uh, g.local is what I do internally. So. 
Um, but then in this case, I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it work group. We're going to, we're going to page down most of this. We can leave unless you want to do additional configuration, which we're not going to talk about in this video, but you can say server role and you can change things to standalone member. You can make it domain controllers, which I've never done ever with Linux. Probably should try that one day and see if I can get windows machines to join into Linux, but I've never worked with that. Uh, we're going to leave most of this configuration alone, including the printer config, and you'll actually see my printer show up on here. SM Samba is going to try to share it out, which is kind of cool. It must actually identify it because I'm guessing it does some kind of discovery and finds it. I, I don't know. So, But let's type this out. So this, we're going to type out some of the options you would do for share here. And I kind of have this tablet's like not in the right place here. Let me move this so I can actually see it at the same time. Okay, so path. It's a lot to remember here. I can't remember all this stuff. So in a previous video, the one I posted to this part one of this video, I created a data a um, volume that I mounted to the data store uh, directory here, mount point. And that's what this data store is. It's actually ZFS backed. You have to watch that video if you want to more know more about the ZFS piece, which is actually a really easy video. Um, we're going to say valid users equals uh, the group. So share users because this is the common share. Um, we're going to say yes, it's writable. I don't know if I can spell yes correctly. And it is also browsable. So these are options you can set. Read only is no. If you want to if you want to be able to set like read only onto a share and nobody can actually do anything in that share, maybe you just want it to be a repository for data that's not modifiable. I'm going to do a create mask of um, full full access for both user and share and, and nothing for everyone. Uh, let's see, directory, mask, same mask. It's 0770. Uh, let's see, guest, OK, equals no. No guests are allowed. Force group, share users. So every time, so it's going to force this group, which means that when somebody creates a file in this path, there, the share users group is going to be assigned no matter what the user was, which is nice because otherwise what will happen is you, if you didn't do that, your users would create files in here and then they would be like the permissions would be for their user and their and their username as a group and then nobody else could access the file. So by saying force group share users, anybody that's part of that share users group can actually access the file after it's been written by somebody else. Uh, let's make sure I've got my uh, top typing here correctly. Browsable, yes, read only. No, create mask, guess go K, force group. And I've got this one that I worked on for a little while because I got tired of seeing garbage files in my um, my SMB shares, Samba shares, when I would use it with Windows. So one of them is like the recycle bin. Windows creates this hidden folder called recycle bin. I don't want to see it. So what I've done is in the Samba share configuration, I've, I'm hiding this stuff, like system information, desktop.any, and the other one is uh, thumbs, which is like thumbs.db, which is the uh, thumbnails for images. So if there's files, images that you have in a particular Samba share, Windows creates a thumbs.db that holds all the thumbnails that it's generated. And so those slashes are not like a folder structure. Those are literally like commas separated, if you will. So recycle bins, one entry, in entry system volume information is another, desktop any is another. I don't want to see these files in the share. So that's what that hide files does. So uh, now we're going to do is we're going to create the test share, and it's going to be basically the same thing. Um, I'm going to pause this until I'm done typing. Oh man, I hit pause twice. So, okay, so I'm done typing for the test volume. It took or the test uh, share, and so basically it's it's under the same location, well the same root directory data store, which is that ZFS backed volume, and then. Um, I've got valid users. Instead of a group with the at sign, it's just the users themselves. This is actually a comma-separated list. So if you had another user, you could type them in like this, and you could literally let those val those users access this. Okay, so <clears throat> um, that's it. So now we're gonna we're gonna write exit out of vim, write and save this file. And I'm pretty sure I got it all typed right. Let's hope I did. And the next thing we need to do is we need to create those those actual paths. So there's nothing in my data store. So I, I was saying I'm going to share out, make uh, share and test, right? And so those are the two folders. What I also want to do is I want to create a script that resets the permissions. Every once in a while, I did something wrong that kind of made the permissions kind of wonky. Um, I don't really have a reason. I hate that technical term wonky, like mag some magic happened on the tech space. But I mean, if you work in IT long enough, sometimes things just don't work like as you intended. Like it's usually user error. You didn't configure it right. But either way. Um, I made this file that basically is going to just go through all of the 
permissions and reset them like the owners and the ACLs. So basically that command right there resets any extended ACLs on that particular folder. And this is going to change recursively. It's going to change who uh, the, the permissions on that folder. So it's essentially saying um, seven. So it's seven seven zero is user full control, group full control, and everyone's zero is is no access at all. And we're going to do that for both of these, the share and the test. And then we're also going to say ch own. So we're going to change the ownership of this recursively to test share underscore users. So test is the user, share underscore users is the group. And we're going to say share. And then we're also going to do the same thing for, uh, actually, this is, yeah, because test. So the reason, I'll explain why I've got test on both of these. So in my scenario at my house, what I've done is I my account basically has is the user for all of them and then share users is the group for all of them so for the share and the test in this scenario like test let's pretend like test is the admin account that the admin account is going to have access to both of them as the primary user if you created another user like say test two what you could do in that scenario oops i didn't spell this right did i that wouldn't work very well ch own say you wanted to do another one like you've got test test two well, test two would be here instead, and it would say share users and then test two. So test is the primary user. Test is not necessarily the primary user for, for the test two folder like that. But we don't have that folder created, so I'm just going to delete that line. I'm going to right quit this out. Um, let's see. I need to change. I need to change this so I can actually execute this shell script. And I'm going to do an, a list right here, and you can see that root and root are the current users and group for both share and test, which won't work in this scenario. So I'm going to say reset permissions. It's going to go through and assign test and share users. So now users um, should be able to, anybody that connects to this should be able to write and read from that folder, assuming that one, they're either test or, or two, they're, they're a member of the share users group, which in this case, test is also a member of share users. So test isn't qualifies as both cases. But if you had additional users, you'd want to make sure they were in the share users group. All right, so we've executed that. So now I think the last thing we need to do is basically just restart uh, the SMB services. So SMBD and NMBD. I'm going to restart both of them associated. Um, another key thing, if you're using the firewall, you need to, uh, we're not using it right now on this scenario, but you would need to add, you would need to add Samba. So I think it's like allow Samba like that. But I don't have it enabled, so you know. It just just as a reminder, if you're trying to do Samba shares and you've got the firewall enabled, nobody's gonna be able to connect to it unless you open those ports. It's not gonna just naturally open them for you. So that should be it, literally. Now I've got two two share two folders out there, and they should be shared via SMB. So give me a second here. I actually want to get the IP address of this guy. So the IP address of this guy is one nine two one six eight fifteen one sixty four. We're going to go ahead and copy that. I don't know why I pushed enter. That's common for command prompt. And I'm going to paste that right here. And we're going to say slash slash 192.168.15.64. I'm going to push enter. And you can see the two shares, test and share, and the printer. Obviously, it found my printer on my network. So if we open one of these, it's going to try credentials that either you've already saved, which in my case, I did some pre-work for this, and those credentials are saved. But what you possibly get is a username prompt that says, hey, you need to sign in. And so you would sign in with test user, and then you would sign in with the my pass password or whatever password you said for the user. And then you should be able to access these. And you can literally copy things into these. But like, let's copy this shortcut. And there you go. I've got that. Now, if I come back to my Linux share here, and if we go, I copied that to the share folder, and you can see it's right there at bluestacks.link. So that's an LNK is a shortcut in Windows. But that's the file that's copied, and you can see what it actually um, permissions it assigned to that particular file, which is good. That's what it's supposed to look like. And um, that's actually going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope it was easy if you're going to do some Samba configuration on your own network and uh, it was easy to follow. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments section. And thanks for watching.